Pro-Q2 is the latest version of FabFilter's Parametric EQ, and besides being an excellent sounding EQ, it's chock full of useful features. I'm going to follow the same format with each of these plugins. First I'll go through the features and controls, and then we'll listen to some examples of the plugin in action. Rather than have a fixed number of parametric bands, with controls that are visible on screen at all times, Pro-Q2 lets you create as many bands as you like, and shows you only the controls for the selected band in a floating band control display. Of course, you can adjust these with the knobs, or by dragging directly in the display. To add a band, you can either double-click anywhere on the display, or drag the yellow center line. There are several different curves to choose from. Besides the standard bell curve, peak and dip, you have low and high shelves, and several filter types, high pass, low pass, band pass, and notch. There's also a tilt curve, which, as you'd expect, broadly tilts the response above and below the center frequency. To save time, double-clicking in different areas of the display calls up different curves. Around the center of the display, you get a bell curve. Toward the bottom gives a notch filter. To the far left or right, a low or high pass filter. And dragging the yellow center line at the far left or right, a shelf. An option click, or a click in the power symbol, bypasses that band, and the X removes it. Just be careful that you've got the right band selected, shown just to the right of the X. That tripped me up more than a few times. The arrows step through the bands in the order they appear in the display, but the bands are numbered in the order you create them to facilitate automation. Besides dragging the handles for each band in the display, you can set values more precisely in this floating band control display. Besides the curve options and the controls we've already seen, there are the standard frequency, gain, and Q, or bandwidth, knobs. Below the curve menu, you can adjust the slope of the various EQ and filter shape. Between the gain and Q knobs is what FabFilter calls the Gain Q Interaction button. When it's on, the Q will automatically change as you adjust gain, which affects how much interaction there'll be between adjacent frequency bands. To the right are controls for stereo instances. You can choose to have that band affect both channels, left or right only, or you can split the band into two separate EQs and process left and right independently. Pro-Q2 also features an MS, mid-side mode, via the channel mode option below. MS processing is a popular technique in mastering, or when EQing a full mix. The signal is divided up into left plus right, centered material common to both channels, and left minus right, differences between channels, typically wide pan tracks and reverb and ambience. Now you can EQ those elements with much greater independence. Notice how, in MS mode, the side EQ can brighten up the symbols without overly affecting the mid, center pan, kick and snare. Besides using the floating band control display, you can employ a number of modifier keys to control these various functions by dragging the band handles, or dots. I won't go through them all now, but you can pause the video to check out the list. You can also access the same controls by right-clicking a band's dot, which brings up a contextual menu with various options. When I want to delete a band, I prefer to do it from here. There's less chance of accidentally removing the wrong band. Hovering over the band's dot, not only shows its settings, but also reveals the band solo feature, a momentary function which lets you listen to only that band as an aid in identifying the specific components of the audio that are being affected by that band. At the bottom of the display is an option to show notes on a keyboard instead of frequencies, for anyone who might want to see how the EQ settings they're dialing up 
will affect the different musical note ranges and harmonics. Besides the overall zoom options, you can zoom in on specific frequency or gain ranges by dragging from the frequency scale itself, up to zoom, left or right to scroll, and a double click to get back to the default zoom level. At the very bottom, besides the MIDI learn function, which I described previously, are a few output options all the way to the right. From left to right, there's a bypass button as an alternative to the DAW's plug-in bypass button, which might avoid clicks when bypassing the EQ in certain modes. There's a phase, or more correctly, a polarity reversal button. The A is for auto gain. This is a nice feature that compensates overall output gain when you apply EQ to maintain overall unity gain, even with large boosts or cuts, something which you'd otherwise have to, or at least should, do by hand with the gain knobs just above. You also have pan controls, which you'll probably leave alone, but in MS mode, they become balance controls for the mid and side signals, a very useful addition. You can show or hide the output gain meter at the right. And the little slider scales the gain of all bands, a very useful feature in my opinion, although you could also do this by command or control clicking to select multiple bands and then dragging. The remaining two functions are the processing mode options and the analyzer options, which includes the very useful EQ match feature. I'll finish up with those next time, and then we can check out Pro Q2 in action.